blurry view of a tree is seen, with a snake coiled on one of its branches. The snake is milky white, small, and its round eyes gaze curiously at something. It slithers down, a red gem clenched in its mouth. The observer admires the snake's beauty as it drops the gem. Perhaps everything starts with the snake, the observer says as the gem reflects sunlight, casting patterns on the ground. On all fours, a person approaches the gem, questioning if it's meant for them. The snake, looking down, addresses someone named Atilian and apologizes. The sun's rays are obstructed by the lush leaves as a voice calls out for Atilian. Atilian, sleeping in the shade, opens one eye, scolding the disturber for interrupting his meditation. Urgently, the newcomer informs Atilian of nefarious individuals surrounding the master in the mansion. Atilian queries the messenger and demands to know who is threatening the grandpa. A large group, some mounted on horses, approaches the gates of a grand mansion, met with inquiry from within. A man with long blonde hair, astride a horse, shoots an irritated glance. He questions the person barring their entry, inquiring if he is Aiden and in charge. A trembling Aiden identifies himself and asks the blonde's purpose. Sinister expressions are exchanged within the group. The blonde presents Aiden with a parchment, proclaiming himself as Orlando of the Mohan family, there to claim territory. Aiden's shock is evident as he disputes Orlando's claim, asserting the domain belongs to Atilian Byrne. Orlando extends his arm, displaying the contract, citing Byrne's death and an unpaid debt settled with the territory. Aiden and two others from the mansion exchange bewildered glances as Aiden vows to contest the deed in court. Visibly angered, Orlando shouts at Aiden to leave, declaring himself an apprentice mage beyond the court's authority while yanking the horse's reins and lifting its front hooves threateningly. Aiden instinctively shields his face as a fat child beside him screams in terror. Someone intervenes, seizing the horse's paw. Orlando's expression shifts to surprise as he notices the newcomer. It's Atilian, his fist clenched, pushing the horse back with authority. Fury overtakes Atilian's face as he denounces Orlando's actions as outrageous. Orlando's horror is evident as he opens his mouth in disbelief. Atilian prepares to strike, confronting Orlando for emboldening reckless behavior in his domain. With a mighty blow, Atilian strikes the horse's neck. He forcefully brings the horse to the ground, commanding silence. The horse lies still, its breath knocked out of it. Orlando leaps down, demanding to know Atilian's identity. Atilian looms over Orlando, his gaze unwavering. Atilian instructs the overweight child, named Faye, to escort Aiden to safety, which Faye complies with, while Aiden warns Atilian to be cautious. Standing firm, Atilian faces Orlando and his cohorts, as Orlando points accusingly, recognizing Atilian as the son of Mage Burn. Laughing mockingly, Orlando taunts Atilian, deriding him as lacking in magical prowess. He brandishes a wand, labeling Atilian a brute for attacking an apprentice mage, vowing to teach him a lesson. Atilian maintains his steady gaze, responding with a simple good. Aiden and Faye watch in terror as Atilian expresses curiosity about magic. Orlando, seething with anger, accuses Atilian of arrogance. With a flick of his wand, Orlando murmurs an incantation, causing its tip to illuminate. Atilian's eyes widen in astonishment as he continues to gaze intently. Orlando chants the spell resounding flash wielding his wand as a bolt of lightning bursts forth. The lightning strikes Atilian, propelling him backward with tremendous force. Aiden and Faye cry out in concern, their voices overlapping as they call for Atilian. Atilian crashes to the ground, the impact reverberating. Still holding his raised wand, Orlando emits a sinister laugh. Concern etches the faces of two other mansion servants. Grinning, Orlando remarks that such is the consequence of defying a mage. Faye's scream echoes, pleading for Atilian. Atilian, sprawled on his back, murmurs that he now understands. Orlando is taken aback by Atilian's words. Atilian gazes at his charred chest, noting the intense pain, estimating he's operating at 60% to 70% of his full strength. Faye, the chubby child, beams with relief at Atilian's apparent recovery. Atilian, now standing, notes Orlando's surprising magical strength despite his appearance, warning him to leave due to his own vulnerability. Orlando bellows in fury at Atilian's perceived blasphemy against magic, flecks of saliva flying from his mouth. Once more, Orlando raises his wand, vowing Atilian's demise. But before Orlando can cast another spell, Atilian swiftly closes the distance and delivers a punch. Startled, a hooded figure nearby shares in the shock. Atilian's punch connects with Orlando's face. The impact sends Orlando sprawling to the ground. The hooded figure raises a hand, casting a spell to halt Atilian's attack. Atilian whirls around, taken aback by the sudden intervention. The magical assault strikes Atilian's abdomen, forcing him backward, blood spewing from his mouth. He slams into the wall with a sickening thud. Atilian coughs up more blood, the impact taking its toll. Aiden and Faye, once again gripped by panic, witness the scene unfold. The hooded figure kneels beside Orlando, employing magic to heal his wounds. One of their companions urges another to fetch the medical kit urgently. Orlando's face mirrors terror, his mouth agape, words failing him. Despite his condition, the hooded figure inquires about Orlando's well-being, receiving only coughs in response. Aiden suddenly collapses, 
prompting a frantic cry from Fay. Atilian is thrust against the wall, his expression twisted in terror. Trembling, Atilian questions the nature of the attack, pondering if it truly embodies the essence of magic. His gaze shifts to the hooded figure who attacked him, their back turned. The hooded figure removes their cloak, facing Atilian directly, and elucidates that true magical power transcends mere physicality, residing within like an expansive sea. Atilian struggles to rise from the ground, urging his unconscious grandfather to awaken. Meanwhile, Faye cradles Aiden, reassuring him that Atilian still lives. With the hood discarded, revealing scars upon the face, the antagonist laments the disrupted plans for a simple territorial handover, now necessitating the eradication of resistance. Atilian, barely standing, confronts the villain, demanding to know their identity. The villain identifies himself as the mage, Nexon's aid. Atilian is struck with shock upon realizing the true extent of magical power wielded by Nexon. Nexon raises his hand, his voice booming, and unleashes the spell flame burst, his palm ablaze with magical energy. Atilian braces himself for impact, crossing his arms defensively. Nexon berates Atilian for his futile attempt at defense, while Aiden watches on with concern. The fiery magic engulfs Atilian, propelling him backwards. Atilian is slammed into the wall, still maintaining his defensive posture, struggling to withstand the onslaught. Atilian cries out in defiance. Nexon halts his magical assault, causing a tumultuous outburst that fills the air with sand and dust. Something catches Nexon's attention, causing him to look startled. Despite the ferocity of the attack, Atilian remains standing, though his hands bear the marks of scorching. With determination blazing in his eyes, Atilian declares it's his turn to retaliate. Nexon, shaking yet impressed by Atilian's resilience, raises both hands, warning Atilian of the consequences of his defiance. But before Nexon can cast his spell, Atilian springs forward, aiming a swift kick at him. Reacting swiftly, Nexon erects a magical shield to block Atilian's attack. Atilian's kick connects with the shield, its force repelled. With one hand maintaining the shield, Nexon casts another spell, enveloping Atilian in a blinding flash of light and flames. Once again, Atilian is hurled backward, crashing into the wall. Nexon stands motionless, his gaze fixed ahead. He notices a cut on his cheek, a single drop of blood trailing down. Meanwhile, Atilian grabs a boulder, pulls himself up, and tells Nexon his move is futile, silently acknowledging his injuries and the challenge of defending against the mage's assaults. Seeing Atilian stand up again, Nexon is shocked as he wonders how can human muscle achieve this level. He then ponders if the rumor he heard might be true. Watching from the side, Aiden worriedly tells Atilian to not fight further and suggests they surrender the territory. Atilian reassures Aiden not to worry, claiming he's found a way to defeat their enemies. A broken chain lies on the ground nearby. Orlando, still supine, lifts his head slightly, urging Nexon not to show mercy. Nexon assures Orlando, vowing to make the Mozhan family pay preparing to unleash more spells. He contemplates the rumor and concludes that it's best not to leave Atilian alive. Without hesitation, Atilian charges at Nexon, determined to strike first and prevent him from casting spells. He launches a barrage of punches at Nexon. Nexon, taken aback, mutters incomprehensible at Atilian's relentless assault. Reacting swiftly, Nexon conjures a shield as Atilian closes in with his fists. Atilian's punches rain down on the shield with full force. Nexon shouts from behind the shield, taunting Atilian that brute force cannot penetrate his magical barrier. Faye and Aiden cry out Atilian's name, looking worried. Joined by two other mansion members, they encourage Atilian to keep fighting. Tears welling in his eyes, Faye implores Atilian to defeat the mage while Aiden watches with concern. Meanwhile, Nexon, visibly angered, declares he's been too lenient and vows to end the farce, conjuring another spell. A golden, circular disc materializes above Nexon's hand, recognized by Orlando as the secret magic. Orlando lifts his upper body, commanding Nexon to eliminate Atilian and his allies. Suddenly, a thick, long chain appears seemingly out of nowhere. The chain loops around Orlando's neck, catching him by surprise. Atilian holds the other end of the chain in his hand. With a determined pull, Atilian yanks the chain Chain, dragging Orlando along, as Nexon shouts in alarm. Nexon catches Orlando with both hands, causing the shield to vanish. Seizing the opportunity, Atilian advances toward Nexon. Nexon is left dumbfounded by Atilian's sudden and unexpected attack. Nexon, caught off guard, fails to react in time, and Atilian's punch lands squarely in his stomach. Gasping for breath, Nexon coughs up blood in the aftermath of the blow, still seething with anger. Meanwhile, Atilian continues to tighten the chains around Nexon's throat, refusing to relent. Despite his dire situation, Nexon, struggling to breathe, prepares to unleash his ultimate technique. Atilian, with a menacing gaze, questions Nexon about the consequences of his violent actions and whether he's considered the repercussions of harming innocent lives. Observing Atilian's actions, Orlando can only conclude that Atilian has descended into madness. Atilian intensifies the pressure on the chains 
commanding Nexon to meet his demise. Suddenly, Nexon raises a hand and casts a soul-locking wheel on Atilian, encasing his neck in a glowing magical disc. Caught off guard, Atilian exclaims in surprise at the sudden appearance of the disc. Meanwhile, Nexon emits a hollow, sinister laugh. Atilian's fury escalates, his face and eyes burning red with rage. With a thunderous roar, he hoists Nexon off the ground pulling the chains around his neck even tighter. Onlookers are stunned and bewildered by the spectacle unfolding before them. The magical disc around Atilian vanishes, releasing the chains. Atilian watches as Nexon's lifeless body, still entwined with the chains, falls to the ground. Atilian emerges as the executioner of mages. Orlando looks up in absolute shock, mouth agape, horror etched on his face. The followers of Orlando drop their swords and surrender, pleading for mercy. Seeing his followers surrender, Orlando becomes enraged, shouting at them, branding them traitors. He berates them for not comprehending the gravity of the situation by merely surrendering. Orlando declares it's all over, threatening death for everyone. He reminds them of the severe punishment by the Magical Alliance for disrespecting mages. The thugs tremble in terror at his words. Even Attilian's people appear shocked, one asking Attilian what they should do. Suddenly, a guard from the tower above points out something approaching. In the distance, a figure draws closer to the mansion. Attilian and the others fix their gaze on the newcomer. It's someone riding a horse galloping toward the mansion. Faye and Aiden also watch the approaching figure intently. The horse halts as it nears them all. A lady with blonde hair is seated atop the horse. She surveys the surroundings, spotting Nexon's lifeless body and the dead horse. Orlando, still prone on the ground, gazes up at the lady. The lady remarks that she might be a little late. Orlando stares at her, recognizing the emblem she wears as that of the Rhine Academy. He pleads with the lady, asking if she's also an apprentice mage and begging for her help. Orlando's thugs are astounded at hearing this. The lady dismounts from the horse, landing gracefully on the ground. Orlando crawls toward the lady, identifying himself as an apprentice mage of the Mosin clan, accusing Attilian and the villagers of grave crimes. He promises the lady generous rewards if she saves him. Instead of listening to Orlando, the lady reaches out to Attilian, showing concern for his injuries. Orlando is thunderstruck, mouth agape, seeing Isabella close to Attilian. Isabella touches Attilian's cheek, expressing pity for his injuries caused by the enemies. She remarks on the seriousness of killing a mage, gesturing towards the dead Nexon. Isabella suggests killing the other thugs to silence them, but they plead for mercy, surrendering. Attilian intervenes, stating they won't have to kill anyone else as the situation hasn't reached that point of no return. He explains the consequences of further violence, refusing to endanger the territory's people or involve Isabella and her family. Impressed, Isabella acknowledges Attilian's thoughtful approach. The villagers look puzzled by the exchange. Attilian proposes resolving the conflict through the upcoming kingdom's triennial mage apprentice grand examination. Fay, Aiden, and the thugs react with surprise to the idea. Attilian declares his intention to become a mage and settle the conflict through a mage duel. Faye suggests that a duel between mages could alter the conflict's nature. Aiden, looking uncertain, reminds Attilian of his inability to practice magic due to his constitution. Orlando is incredulous at Attilian's idea of becoming a mage, having always believed Attilian lacked magical aptitude. However, Attilian, displaying determination, asserts that his lifelong desire to become a mage has driven him to train extensively. Isabella, Faye, and Aiden react with awe, impressed by Attilian's unwavering determination. Isabella smiles, expressing her belief in Attilian's abilities and his capacity to achieve his goals. Faye loudly declares his faith in Attilian as well. Encouraged by the villagers' supportive words, Attilian is urged to pursue his aspirations. Meanwhile, the thugs were expressions of dismay. Orlando dismisses Attilian and the others as mad, considering their lack of magical abilities. Attilian glares at the thugs, ordering them to take Orlando and leave and to inform the Mosin clan that he can defeat a mage with his fists. Grateful, the thugs agree to depart, carrying Orlando away on one's back. Attilian remains resolute in his decision to become a mage. He reflects on his childhood, recalling an incident where he was mocked and attacked by other children who labeled him the child of a snake demon. Furious, young Attilian defended his mother's honor by striking back at his tormentors, fueled by a deep sense of indignation. He lunges for the mouth of the offending child, threatening to smash it. The other children recoil in terror, fearing the demon's child will cause harm. Attilian lands another punch, vehemently rejecting the label and demanding they stop. From childhood, Attilian has endured being called the child of a snake demon because his parents vanished soon after his birth. Riding on his grandfather's back, Attilian questions if he truly is a demon's child. Aiden reassures Attilian, dismissing the notion as nonsense, and assures him his parents were extraordinary individuals. Attilian probes further, questioning why they abandoned him, to which Aiden suggests they may have had no choice. Once, Attilian encountered a peculiar mage from the east. Angrily, Attilian challenges the bald mage, declaring his readiness to fight despite his youth. The monk mage pacifies Attilian, stating he means no harm and emphasizing his aversion to conflict as a monk. The monk asserts that his words are based on first-hand observation, 
but Attilian clenches his fists, warning the monk against speaking nonsense. The monk explains that in the distant east lies Lyrian city, the mage capital, with the Rafa Tower at its center. The monk recounts the legend of a suppressed snake demon beneath Rafa Tower for a millennium, rumored to have offspring hiding in the Cloud March continent. Attilian dismisses these tales as mere rumors. The monk challenges Attilian, questioning why he can't wield magic if he is the child of a renowned mage. He encourages Attilian to delve into his heritage if he's curious. Attilian realizes his purpose in that moment. Now, in the present, Attilian bids farewell to Aiden and the villagers, who wave back, wishing him well as he and Isabella depart. As their horses gallop away, Attilian reveals his plan to uncover his heritage and become a mage. He believes becoming a mage is essential for him to freely explore the worlds. Isabella interrupts, pointing out something ahead. Before them stands a grand city atop a hill, Lyrian City, home to the Mage Academy.